All right, Dennis, I've said it a million times before, and I, I, I don't know how many times I have to say it, but Dennis Kang happens to be the Canadian fighter, especially in that middleweight division, that mainstream fans just don't know about, and I don't know why. Why is that? I don't know, man. I'm staying on the underground, you know? <laughs> well, with the skills that you have, I mean, you were in that top 10 in the middleweight class for the longest time, with your name being mentioned on numerous occasions to take on a guy like Anderson Silva in the future. But your your future right now, basically, you're looking at Spirit MC, you're looking at Dream, and you're looking at Raw. What's next for you? Uh, right next, uh, well, immediately I'm going to be fighting uh, in Spirit MC next week. Then I'll be fighting in the, in Raw Combat in, in October, and then after that I'll be fighting uh, most likely in Dream. And then, yeah. So you got a pretty busy schedule. Now, Spirit MC is an exceptional event uh, you know, in Korea. Talk about the fact that you're, you're fighting in Korea. You're, you're very popular. Like you're, you're, like, you're beyond a stud down there. Yeah, you know, they, 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 they took a liking to me because, uh, I mean, uh, most people know I'm half Korean, and uh, when I fight in Japan, I fight, I represent Korea, you know, so... A lot of the fans really, really started following me, and you know they've kept supporting me throughout the years. So, and, and also I fought Spirit MC a number of times, and I won the, the heavyweight belt over there. You know, and that's what I'll be defending next week when I fight. You know. So you said the heavyweight belt? Yeah, it's the heavyweight. It's actually kind of an open weight. You know. So the guy, but the guy, most of the guys that I'm fighting are around the same weight as me. It just means basically I don't have to cut weight. Which is awesome. <laughs> I was going Go to say, because you're a big middleweight, man. For 185 pounds, you're a thick dude. I remember the last time I saw you, we did the George St. Pierre special, and there you were at TriStar, and you gave me your typical you know, handshake and hug, and I was like, dude, you're big. Did I hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty, he could have been a lot worse, that's for sure. But you know what? You're looking at that fight, your next opponent there. He's a tough guy. Yeah, he is, man. Kim Jae Young, is, honestly, I, I fought him twice before. I beat him both times. And then he came down and trained with us at ATT uh, two years ago, and he'd improved a lot. You know, in, in the six weeks that he was there, he'd improved tremendously. And I know how hard he works, and, and I've seen his last few fights. And, you know, he's uh, he, he's come a long ways, but so have I, you know. And, you know, I know he really wants me, and he, you know, he's a number one contender. He's, he's earned his way. He's earned his spot at, at fighting me, but you know what? That's going to end right that night. <laughs> That's going to end uh, August 31st. Well, if statistics and trends and history prove itself correct, you'll be 3-0 against this guy here. Yeah. Let's talk about the fact that Raw Combat, you're taking on Marvin, the Beastman Eastman, a, yeah. a former UFC veteran. Uh, I mean, that that's, he's probably looking to get over you to get back in the UFC, whereas you're just like, this is another fight? No, not really. I never think of it like that, you know. Well, well yeah, I do think of it as another fight, but uh, what I mean is I don't, I'm not taking him lightly at all. You know, I've known about Marvin for a long time. Uh, you know, I've got uh, my, my good friend uh, Bill Mahood trained with him extensively in Las Vegas, so I know the kind of fighter and athlete that he is. You know, and I know he's uh, he's an ex-Calgary Stampeder, so he'll probably have a little bit of a, of a home crown advantage, maybe. You know, because then again, I'll be Canadian and he'll be American. But you know, I, I am taking him very seriously. You know, he's got a lot of experience. He's fought all over the world. You know, he beat my, my other good friend Jason McDonald, who, who's also a tremendous fighter. So. I mean, that, that speaks for itself right there, you know, so uh, definitely not looking past this fight at all. Well, he's, he's got a very explosive style, he's got some good wrestling skills, yeah. but he explodes yeah. off his feet with those punches. What do you got to do to neutralize a guy who fights like that? I think a lot of it has to, you know, you got to try to use the distance sometimes, you know, because his downfall is he's, uh, he's a little bit shorter, you know. So you got to play with that, and if you look at Quentin Jackson's fight with him, he made really good use of that, you know. So, uh... You know, I'll be, I can't really give away my strategy right then and there, but, you know, I got a few tricks I'm working on. Absolutely. But at, at the same time, I'm concentrating on my next fight right now, which will be next week. Now, your training camp is absolutely no joke. You got guys like George St. Pierre in there. I don't know if George's been helping you since the Fitch fight, but he's usually there to help you. David Loazzo, usually Cote's down there, sometimes Mark Court. Talk about that camp. Yeah, it's been really good. You know, for the last two months I've been here, and I, I originally I thought I was fighting July 21st in Dream. 
And when that fell through, I decided to, to stick to stick it out here and help John. Uh, John, I mean George, train for for John Fitch, you know. So I kind of peaked at the same time as him, and now I've just been maintaining since then. And we had a lot of guys coming through. I mean, at first it was just George, uh, Roger Huerta, and I. Then David Lazo and, and Cote came back. Then it was Nathan Markhart that was here, and then we had Gustavo Shimu, Gustavo Machado, who was here, you know. So we had a just a, a who's who of uh, of MMA elite. You know, so it was a it was a real real uh, real thick room when we were in there sparring on a uh, couple times a week. You know, that's it pretty... was like real fights two or three times a week. I swear, yeah, a couple <laughs> tough guys in there. That's for sure. Now you look oh, at yeah. uh, potentially Dream, uh, and, and yeah. I love seeing you fight in Japan. There, I think it's just great. It brings me back to the Pride days. But Dream, mm-hmm. you know, to me is almost like the new Pride. But how do you feel fighting for them, considering there's been some ups and downs? Well, you know, it's uh, it, it, like like you said, it's a great organization. It's basically like uh, almost like a new version of Pride, and, and, and I'm very happy being there. You know, uh, I haven't had the greatest luck in the fight so far, but it doesn't really keep me down. You know, I learn from it and move on. Uh, having said that, I've really I've changed my uh, my mindset and my training a little bit, in the sense that I've I'm more now focusing on uh, on you know, learning and, and becoming a better fighter as opposed to just kind of automatically getting in there and and uh, and assuming that you're going to win. You know, when, when you win that many, I won a lot of fights in a row for a while, so it kind of gets to your head and you kind of lose your edge a little bit after a while, you know, I find anyway. So those two, those last two fights that I had kind of were kind of a, a wake-up call for me, so it was really good. I take it positively. Well, you know, the the best medicine for a fighter sometimes is a loss because you have, it, it tends to be a wake up call. And right. what scares me is if Dennis Kang has to wake up. That that's I feel bad for his next opponents. <laughs> yep, you should. <laughs> now you take a look. You you mean you you trained all over the world. You've been all over the world, and you spent some quality time with the American top team. Are you still considered affiliated with them, or is it just you? You're, you're, yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. I just uh, you know I'm uh, I'm waiting to get back in the U.S. on a visa, but uh, you know and. You know, I always be with ATT. You know, They're, those guys are like my family. And there's some tough guys coming out of there. Now, you, you bring a good point about your visa getting back into the states. If that gets you back into the states, what are the chances of a Dennis Kang fighting for an organization like the UFC? Uh, it's you never know. It could happen. You know, I mean, I, I've only got one fight left uh, on my contract with Dream. I'm very happy there at the moment. You know, if negotiations go well, then I will fight for them again. You know, but it's really, it's, it's up to my management. You never know what could happen, you know. Absolutely. Now, of course, the UFC is the Super Bowl or considered the Super Bowl of mixed martial arts. We'd love to see you in there because I'd love to see a fellow Canadian get the mainstream acceptance that guys like Patrick Cote and George St. Pierre and David Loazzo are getting here in our country over here. I'd love to see you get in there. But, of course, business is business. Money's money and fights are fights. Dennis, I want to thank you very much for coming on the air. I want to wish you the best of luck in all your fights. No problem, man.